All right, J-O-N, you just time to go back to work? Let's get back to work, man. Hey, man, well, let's let them know. The black market is open. We have things for sale. We have things for sale. We have things for sale. I ring the bell to let them know that there's money on the floor. Remember on Players Club, Dollar Bill hit the green button. Money on the floor. Money on the floor, bitch. What's your ass doing down here? All that. <laughs> Luke downstairs. Who is Luke? The rapper. Me so horny. Pop that you coochie. That again. Bruh, please do. Hey, Players Club, one of the funniest movies Bernie ever Mac made. Bernie Mac, one of the funniest all the time. Bruh, everything Bernie Mac said in that movie was funny as hell, bruh. Lucky naked. That nigga locked him in the trunk. He said, please don't lock me in. You know I got insomnia. What the? <laughs> <laughs> oh. That nigga, when them, when them niggas was outside looking for him, that nigga said, you gotta pay them country boys nothing! Nothing! <laughs> <laughs> that nigga was moving about around that club, popping out them lockers, man. I had the cuts. What type cuts of nigga don't way. never come to his own club? <laughs> bruh, that. That made me feel good. Bruh, I already rung the bell to let them know that the black market is open, and today, man, we got some, we got, Family in here today, yeah, for man. Sure, man. We've been wearing this shit on the road. You've been sending your people to pull up on us. And, yeah. And then Chico from the city, so he been already knew what was going on and everything. For sure. You done finally made it over here to the black market. Full circle, man. It's hard to catch you in the A, though. Yeah, but hey, I'm here now. I love the spot, too. Yeah. Y'all doing it. Then I see you over here with my partner Jeremy and shit. Good day since. Good man. Hell yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, it's always good when you got friends like that, you know, it's gonna throw you that alley you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Bro, introduce yourself to the world, man. I go by the name of All Homage, but my mama named me Malik. Malik Jarrett, CEO of the Eat Brand. If you don't eat, you die in the street. Elevate all the time. Yesterday was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about that. <laughs> Shit over with. Yeah, it's over. Good it's or over. bad, we gotta do it again, whatever. Hey, and that's yesterday. the beautiful part about it is you get another chance. Now, what inspired you to create this brand? When did it start taking off and you start seeing success <clears throat> and all of that? I was starving in college. So I was always used to having a job, you know what I'm saying? High school like that. Freshman year of college, that money ran out real, real fast. My friends were going to Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Ooh, my that, that's a Chick-fil-A kind of expensive too, especially when expensive you ain't got no paper. Then too. Yeah. Had 81 cent, went to my dorm room, just was like, yeah, I'm gonna do whatever I need to do to eat, you know what I'm saying, no matter what. And um, that eventually led me to making some poor decisions, you know what I'm saying, that got me locked up. And then, uh, but while, but, uh, hunger. Yeah, hunger. But then, um, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying, when I was sitting in the cell, I was just, you know, telling God, like, you know, I, don't, I know I'm not really, I know I'm not really meant for this. Like, this is not supposed to be my life. What do you got for me? Like, right. you know what I'm saying, just use me. And I just got into photography real heavy. Um, fast forward. Still able to graduate. I came home, D.C., and um, I actually started working for Germs at a radio show. Um, he was just, you know, putting me on with different gigs. And um, we did the Black, uh, no, we did the uh, Broccoli City Fest. Did the Broccoli City Fest. I took some pictures. Uh, Erica Badu, Future, Willow Smith. Um, I went home that night, and I'm, I'm kind of talking real fast, but I went home that night, put the pictures on, on Instagram that night. By the time I woke up in the morning, a bunch of blogs, um, artists, everybody was using my pictures, but I ain't having like, you know, no representation. You know, they wasn't tagging me or anything like that. So then uh, all my friends was just like, you know, you need a watermark, you know, of course. So uh, a couple days later, my man Michael Caldwell, shout out to Mike, he uh, hit me in the DM on Twitter. and was like, yeah, man, I got this logo for you. Put this logo on all your pictures so people know it's you. And it was just, you know, the same, the same Eat logo. I ain't changed nothing to it or nothing. It's the same logo he sent me in 2016. And I'm just like, man, you know, that's love. I'm trying to pay him and everything. He's like, bro, like, on any trip, I made this on my phone in two minutes. I just want you to have some representation. 
So around this time, I'm working two jobs. I'm working uh, 9, 9 to 4.30, and I'm working 6 to 11 at two different restaurants, and they was across the street from each other. I was literally on the same block all day for six days a week. And uh, my friends was like, man, you know, we want to support you, but we don't, you know, we don't do photo shoots and all that. Make some T-shirts. I ain't know nothing about T-shirts, nothing about making clothes. Um, so I put that pressure back on them. I'm like, man, help me out. You know, I got the money to start it, but, you know, help me out. So they kind of, you know, started jiving a little bit, too. And then eventually, um, I just started praying. I just started switching up my prayer. You know, I'm not a big religious dude, but I am spiritual. So um, I just started asking God to use me however he want to use me. Like, I don't care if it's photography or whatever, because I'm, I'm just, you know, at this point, I'm busting my ass, and I'm not really getting no results. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to help my mother out and everything. My mother wasn't working at the time. And so um, it just came to me like, man, just go ask Ma. You know, my dude's going to look out every time. I went to my mother with my logo. So I'm trying to put this on some T-shirts. And she got me, she found, she found the person to give me some T-shirts made. My first T-shirts was garbage. They wasn't nothing like, you know, what people see now. Um, but that first weekend, my friends wasn't bluffing. My, that first, the first two days, I sold out. I made more money those two days than I did in a week at both of my jobs. So I'm like, shit. But do you see how important that support system is? That support man. system, everything, you know what I'm saying? I, I ain't never one of them people that's going to be like, you know, self-made, all that. Like, man, plenty of people played a part because they seen, they seen greatness in me, even though none of us had the vision, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, when Jarns put me on uh, on the Mix Up show, he he ain't really know me from a can of paint, you know what I'm saying? But I guess he could just tell from my aura, my energy that, you know, that I was just like him. We, 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 was, we always been in line, you know what I'm saying? That's why we both successful entrepreneurs today. But um, yeah, I just I started with that, and probably like two weeks after I sold out, all my friends started hitting me up like, man, you know, people people uh, ask me about my shirt, you know what I'm saying? And being who I am, you know, from D.C., we always want to be exclusive. So at first I was like, shit, we just gonna wear this shit for us, and ain't nobody else gonna be able to get it. But I'm also working two jobs, you know what I'm saying? Trying to help my mother out and everything like that. I'm like, nah, whoever want what, just hit my Instagram. So that happened in like March. By the end of the summer, that March, I had like 3,000 followers. By the end of that summer, I had like 25,000 followers from March to like August. And it was all organic, from organic word of mouth. Um, I didn't have a website until 2018. So 2016, 2017, the only way you could get it is if you knew me. You got it from me personally. And um, it was more than just selling the clothes. Eat stands for elevate all the time. If you don't eat, you die in the street. You know what I'm saying? Our other slogan is yesterday was yesterday. So I'm letting people know this when I'm giving it to them. And I was serving my shirts out of, you know, brown paper bags like lunch. And um, it was really about that message, getting that message out early on. And it still is. But that's what kind of brought people together as well. Because I, I used to get stories like people being in the club and they'd probably be beefing somebody, but then they'd be like, oh, somebody over there got the E-shirt on, so they're like, my, hold up. It gotta be, you know what I'm saying? Gotta, it gotta be some man. type of connection. Or, yeah, some, yeah, some connection or something like that. And so it really, um, it really took D.C. by storm, and D.C. was always known, you know, as far as having our own clothing lines and entrepreneurship like that. But I feel like, you know, around the time when I started, we was kind of bringing it back, and now yeah. we got that energy all the way back. And D.C. now, it's, it's over. 200 clothing lines. What you bring? So, right now, all this is new, you know what I'm saying? I wish I could bring y'all some OG pieces, but um, this all this all the things for my, my new my new uh, winter collection. Um, we got some more things dropping in the spring. Everything else sold out. I mean, that's good and bad. I wish I could show y'all, but it's gone. Let me ask you, look, you <laughs> said something earlier. Um, you said your first T-shirts was garbage. It was garbage. But see, we talk about this on the on the show all the time. It's like, you gotta know the start, going. dog, yeah. be ugly. Yeah. You gotta start with that garbage yeah. shirt. Like, but at least you got it out and you can physically touch it. Right, idea and every time somebody had some criticism, I already knew, I'm telling myself the same thing, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Because like I said, I never went to school for this. I never even took a business class, let alone a fashion class or anything like that. So I was like, man, I gotta catch up. You know what I'm saying? People like this, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I gotta, I gotta respect, the, respect the game, basically. I gotta learn this shit. And so um, I was just building up, trying to learn it, but I was in the back of my mother house, uh, with just some patches and blank shirts. And I was just heat pressing them joints for a whole summer until, you know, I got my money up. And then, you know, now I got, you know, like production like this and everything. But um, 
I always had a vision for where I was going. I ain't never really focused on where I was at, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Even when I was in good places, you know what I'm saying? It was always about where I'm going, you know? If I, and if I'm in a bad place, it's like, all right, how are we going to get out of it? So I always had the vision for that. And um, I think a lot of people, they just got to start, man. Yeah. They, it, it start with a start because you ain't gonna, a lot of times you ain't going to even know what to do until you get started. Like, YouTube not going to tell you or another entrepreneur, they might forget to tell you. So you just got to get... Get your hands there. Some things you just gotta live. You can't yeah, learn. You gotta live it. Yeah, I like that. I see you got a collab over on the table with New yes, Balance, sir. man. So, How did that um, come about? New Balance, that's the uh, one of the biggest shoe brands in the DMV, and um, I, I, I like to tell people this just came from doing the work every day. I didn't know anybody at New Balance. I ain't had nobody email, phone number, but I was just doing the work every day, and then um, you know I got a phone call. Shoe City called me and they were like, you know, New Balance is trying to get somebody to make a uh, to make a shoe, and we told them you. And um, during that time, I was doing a lot in the community. I mean, I still do a lot in the community, but I was I'm known in the DMV for just being a community type dude, community brand, giving back, um, just showing the kids. And they recognized that, so uh, they sat me down with New Balance one day out Baltimore at their headquarters. And um, when I walked in that joint, I ain't gonna hold you. When I walked in there, I was like, man, I had all these like crazy ideas for shoes I wanted to make from like back in the day, stuff I wanted to bring back. But um, they were kind of like a little bit passive, like, I don't know, this is the first time. And um, later on, so this is the first shoe we dropped, and it was like 150 pair. There you go. And uh, that sold out, and we dropped that on a Saturday. That sold out before the Jordans. So that's when they was like, all right, this, this kid's serious. And um, after that, we sold out sold out of those, they flew me up to their headquarters in Maine, where we made the V2. Where we made the V2, and that's when we uh, finally able to do like kids sizes and adult sizes. They well, Javier. <laughs> <laughs> My boy Javier <laughs> fucked them up. He got little feet. <laughs> now, they, flew me up, uh, they flew me up to their factory, and I, I got to learn a lot about the brand. And so um, before they showed me like how the shoes are made and everything, like they gave me a, a rundown of the whole you know, New Balance brand. So I was the first person since James Worthy in the 80s to get my own shoe in the United States with New Balance. Shout out to James Worthy. Shout out to James Worthy. Bro, that's hard. That's Shout amazing. And I know, like, coming from where you're coming from, yeah. you're able to work with one of the, 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 like you could say, one of the biggest brands yeah. in the city. Like, I'm, it's a I'm, global yeah, it's like brand, a, but yeah. it's concentrated here in your area. It's part sure. of the culture. I know that was huge. For sure. It, it's just, like, this right here just, like, make you a legend forever, like, where we from. Like, I know a lot of other places, I'm, the best way to put it, like this shoe right here is like our Air Force One, you know what I'm saying, to, to other states. So to have them knock on your door and just be somebody that was screen printing, I mean, the heat pressing shirts in the, in the back room of my mother's house like a year before that, it was all a blessing. Then I just had to do it for the hood. I had to show the kids like, man, you could do this. Because um, that's a lot, another reason why I started getting out into the community because, you know, when I was young, I used to say I wanted to be a doctor. But I, I ain't no doctor, you know what I'm saying? I probably would have been a doctor if I ever met one. So yeah. a lot of times we just got to show the kids. So you got to just literally put ourselves in front of them so they can believe it's real. So once I made the first one, I dropped the second one. The second one sold out. They was like, you know, you could do a third one. It's up to you. I was like, why not? I got to do this for the, for the hood. So we dropped the third one. Did, did well on that as well, you know what I'm saying? But um, I'm glad to see... You know, New Balance growing, and they giving other uh, black entrepreneurs opportunities as well, you know what I'm Tell saying? Tell them holler at me. Yeah, nah, for real. <laughs> they definitely need to holler at you. Um, but they, they, they with that. They into tapping into the culture. And with every brand I work with, whether it's New Balance or Ann Pisa or DTLR, Shoe City, you know what I'm saying? I make sure they, they align with me on my efforts for the community. Because right now in my city, we, we battling with gentrification, but also the youth are lacking opportunities, and it's right. affecting everybody. Yeah, I heard the white people in D.C. tripping, trying to make them turn the go-go music off, man. Y'all yeah, get the hell on, man. man. <laughs> yeah, long live Move go -go. back to Virginia. We got, we, got a lot, we got a lot going on in the city, but, yeah, that's what we really battling with, and that's really, really what it's all about, you know what I'm saying? It's about the next, the next designer to come through and really turn it up even more than eat. Speaking of eat, man, drop your Instagram so, so we can keep that number rolling. Oh, yeah, uh, all homage, A-L-L-H-O-M-A-G-E. Or you can follow the, uh, the brand page, Eat the Brand. It's just like What's the like website? Allhomage.com. Yeah. A-L-L-H-O-M-A-G-E. Now, what advice would you give 
to the next up and coming Malik. Um, Somebody watching this, sitting at their mom crib doing some heat like presses. Like to, to be real frank, man, drop your nuts, bro. I don't care about what nobody thinking. Like, what do if it, they don't have nuts? It's do it for yourself. I mean, you know, the terms of it, like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> I got to make sure it different, y'all, Yeah, y'all, do, it. y'all know what I'm talking about, but um, you really can't focus on what everybody else doing. You got to run your race, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, no fear. It's, it's that it's like it's the horse it's the horse race mentality, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't know, but horse races, they got horses got blinders on. They just running their race. All they see is what's in front of them. And you really gotta look at it like that because ain't nothing overnight, you know what I'm saying? You gotta put the work in. I tell people it's hard, but it's fair. So just be ready to put the work in for for real. Hey man, super proud of you. Man, thank you. Proud I, of y'all. I too. can't wait to see what your next level looks like. We got this, we gonna we gonna do the uh, collab. Most definitely. 85 collab. Most definitely. I got a dope ass idea I'm gonna drop on you after this after we turn the camera off, man. Sure. And we appreciate you stopping through the black market. Man, thank y'all for having Much me. Love thank y'all for success. doing this, man. Like really like what y'all doing with y'all platform is major, it's amazing. And um like for y'all that don't see like these people, like his the whole 85 South team, they work very hard, man. So I take my hat off to y'all, man. Like for real. Y'all thank part you, of the, part of the culture and the community. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I was telling everybody, love you from the D.C. Yeah, yeah. Y'all part of the culture and community, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Chico Ben, my guy. He do he does a lot, you know what I'm saying? Um, and he definitely represents the city well. And every time y'all come through, y'all always showing love. So, man, yeah. I, I appreciate y'all for real. Well, there you have it, folks. The black market is officially open. <laughs>